Unholy Grail number one, written by Cullen Bunn, art by Mirko Kolak, with colors by Maria Santiolala. I know I may have added a little too many laws in there. Percival, the last knight of the round table, returns to destroyed Camelot with the Holy Grail. He sits at the Siege Perilous, the seat for the man who would find the Grail, at the broken round table and ponders. But oh, and how this tale is woven, we then go back to see the beginning of the great Grand Arthurian cycle, with the stricken King Uther and Merlin. But not Merlin as we consider him in standard tales, for this Merlin is truly a demon wearing the flesh of a man who did falsely claim that he was one of the sons of the devil. And in that shift, we see the story of King Arthur change. Eventually, the demon Merlin finds a son of Uther, the rightful king, and trains him in the ways of kingship by way of demon. Countless men fall to Arthur's blade, and each of those would-be king's weapons get tossed into the lake outside his castle, offerings to the Lady of the Lake in return for the rotten heart of the land. But back in the prison of the story, Percival is struck down, for the magic of the seat would only listen to Merlin's words. But any hope for England was just a lie. And that's where the issue ends. I always say this when someone does anything on the Arthurian cycle, I have always been a sucker for it, and all that's linked to it, so seeing a much darker take on it really does interest me. Now I know what some of my long term watchers, all five of you, are thinking. Oh here we go again, another book by Cullen Bunn that the archivist is going to probably give a skip to since it's not what he wants. But I'm actually going to say that I dig it. It's dark and definitely a twist on everything, but it justifies itself because it's an interpretation that I can get behind. It all boils down to one twist to the tale, with Merlin being evil, and that coloring all the world to this darker tone because that's what the driving force is. I can not only get behind it, but really enjoy the fact that it's not just another stock retelling of Arthur, be it the same sort of Shining Knights, or trying to make it more realistic interpretation. It's a dark mirror to the tale that I really truly dug. As for the art style, while I do think that it does have a couple cluttered points and could be too rough at points, it's never outright bad or even anything more than just maybe a hiccup on the road if you're reading it on your computer and a little zoomed in. So my verdict for this is most definitely at the very least a read it. Read it means that it is worth the read, but I would actually say if you have any interest in the Arthurian legend, then it is definitely worthy of the buy just on the inventiveness alone. But that's all for today. If you agree with me that this was totally righteous, or if you disagree with me and just think it wasn't that good of a book, then leave a comment below. As always, this is a discussion. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and please donate to the Patreon to better the channel. But just liking and sharing us around really does help even just a little bit. And as always, stay golden, Inklings.